Okay, uh, we're starting a series on uh, HTML5 and uh, Canvas. Now, I just want to state that um, the Canvas is something that's really interested me for a while, um, and I'm actually still learning myself. So um, I'm going to do my best to teach you guys, as I always do. Uh, but if I say something improper, uh, you can let me know in the comments below, but don't be so mean about it. But I'm going to do my best to explain stuff properly and as best I can. And um, also, I want to mention that uh, I have found uh, a website called HTML5CanvasTutorials.com uh, to be uh, very good at explaining Canvas and having a very interactive little interface. And a majority of my tutorials are going to be very similar to their tutorials because that's where I learned. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have my terminal down here. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but as always, use whatever text editor that you prefer for writing code. Um, also, I'm going to be using uh, Epiphany in most of these tutorials, Epiphany browser. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, it's not my main browser. Normally, I use Chrome and sometimes Firefox. Um, but the reason I'm using Epiphany as I have in past web tutorials is that it will automatically detect when I save my file and automatically update. I don't have to go refresh the page. And I think that's kind of nice, especially when I'm doing tutorials. So anyway, I already have it pointed at a file, which is this file right here called linebasic.html. So I'm going to open that with Vim. And you can see that it's a very, very basic HTML file that doesn't display anything, display anything yet. Um, we have our little uh, tag up here, which is something I pretty much never remember to do. It's proper to do it. Most of the time you're okay not doing it. Uh, most of my videos I haven't put that there. and I'm surprised more people haven't yelled at me about it. But it's just saying the doc type is an HTML. And you technically should have that even though it's not really a requirement in most cases. Then I got my HTML tags, header tags, and body tags. And what we're doing today is pretty much going to be all in the body tag. So let me go ahead and start editing here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our canvas element. So I'm going to create a tag. I'm going to type in canvas. Oops, that's all types are wrong. Okay, canvas. Uh, I'll give it an ID. ID equals uh, my canvas. And I'll give it a width of, we'll say, 600. And we'll give it a height of, we'll say, 300. And we will close our canvas tag. So now I can save that. This up here will automatically update. You don't see anything yet because we haven't drawn anything to the canvas just yet. So now I'm going to start uh, writing some JavaScript. Uh, I'm normally put JavaScript in the header. Uh, thing is, you do need uh, the canvas and everything to load uh, before the script runs uh, in most cases, which you could put it in the header tag and uh, and have it wait or have it activate with a button click. Um, but most of these tutorials I've seen put it in the body afterwards. I've heard different arguments on different things. For these tutorials for right now, I'm going to put the JavaScript in line in the body here. So I'm just going to say script and I will close my script tag. And uh, now we're going to create a couple of variables here. We're going to say oh, var. We're going to say canvas. And the canvas is going to be um, document dot get element by ID. And of course, if you look above, we called it uh, my canvas. So we're saying, uh, look, our, our canvas, their variable here is going to equal this. It's going to, anytime we call canvas, it's actually going to be looking at this object up here. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to create another variable here. And I'm going to call it context. Uh, and once again, most HTML5 canvas tutorials I've seen call it context, but you don't have to call it context. You can call it my canvas or something else if you want. Uh, but we're going to say that, that is our canvas, so our canvas element. Uh, and we're going to say get the context 
of that element. And in this case, we're going to set that to 2D because we're going to be drawing 2D stuff. We're going to be drawing lines in this tutorial. Although in the coming weeks, we will eventually get to 3D stuff. Uh, that's way down the line. Got to learn the basics first. So now we're going to say context. So that's our, our canvas context here. And we're going to say we're going to draw on it and we're going to begin a path which is a line in this case. Uh, so we're going to say begin path. See, makes sense, right? Now we're going to take our context. It's kind of like our paintbrush. Uh, it's where we're going to start drawing from. So we're going to move it to and we're going to give it a position. And I'll say um, 200 by 300. Sure. No, let's go 200 by 30. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say context again. And in these simple tutorials, think of context once again as like a paintbrush. And now we're going to say line 2. And we're going to give it another position. So we'll say 250, comma 50. So what we're saying here is, think of our, once again, our context as our paintbrush we're going to move it someplace. So we're going to move it 200 pixels by 30 and then we're going to from that point draw a line to 250 and 50. But uh, we need to give it a little more information before we actually draw that. Um, and <coughs> well actually no we don't. <laughs> we will in a minute we're going to add stuff to this. We're going to say context dot stroke so this is when it's actually going to draw the lines. So once again, we're going to begin a path. We're going to start that path at 200 by 30. And then we're going to move to 250 by 50. And then we're going to draw that line that we just created. So if I save this, give it a second, it should update in my browser. We get absolutely nothing. I must have typed something in here wrong. Um, let's see. Everything is looking right. Context, context. Oh, there we go. And now that I think about it, I'm probably not going to use Epiphany in the future because I really like Google's debugger and I probably could have found that a little bit faster with that. But let's save that. Oh, and you can see up here we drew a line. So basically, we went over. 200 pixels down 30 and then we drew a line to 250 pixels over and 50 pixels down. Let's go ahead and change that a little bit. We're going to say instead of 200 over, let's go 100 pixels over to start. We'll save that and you can see now instead of starting at 200 we started at 100 over, went 30 down and then we went 250 over and 50 down. Now let me show you something here. We're going to set this to 50. And you can see now we're going back the other way. So I wanted to point that out that we're not going 250 pixels over from the point we're at. We're going 250 pixels as where it is located uh, in our grid altogether. It's a uh, absolute position rather than relative. Uh, so now there's other options you can give to lines. So, ooh, we drew a line, big deal. Okay, um, not that we're going to get much fancier in this tutorial. What we're going to do here is we're going to say context, and we're going to give it some other uh, attributes, and this time we're going to say line width. And we'll say line width equals 50, or 15, I mean. Save that, and now you can see our line is thicker. Let's go ahead and change this back to... 250 so we have a little bit longer of a line. So there we go. So that is our line width. If we can go uh, 10. And you see it's a little bit thinner. Or we can go 50 and now we're going to have a big old fat line. Okay. Let's go ahead and put it back to 15. I think that was a good number. And now, uh, each time by default, we're drawing a black line. Let's give it some color. 
So we're going to say here context, and we're going to say stroke style. And we're going to say that equals, and in here we can give it a color. So I'm just going to type in red. Save that, give it a second to update, and boom, we've got a red line. Uh, we can do blue as well. We can also go, I think this will work, light blue. And now we got a light blue. We can also do uh, green. Or let's light green. And green, like so. So uh, a bunch of different colors. You can also use, you know, uh, your um, uh, hex codes for HTML color. I'm not sure if I'm using the right terms there, but you, you should know what I mean. Like uh, instead of typing red, you could do uh, pound FF000 and it should be, oh, it's, it's black. What did I do? Oh, one, not enough zeros. Boom, there we go. We could also, you know, change this to a five. I'm not really sure what color this is gonna end up being, but oh, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, let's go change this to, would a G work there? I think it should. Nope, that just sent it to black. I don't think that's right. Let's try a, I'm making up stuff here. Okay, there we go, kind of got a brownish color. Okay, um, so we went over drawing a line, the line width, and the color of the line. Let's go ahead and do one more thing, and that will be our line end caps. So <clears throat> we're going to say context dot uh, line cap. And once again, you have to put these things before you draw the line. And when you say context stroke, that's when you're drawing the line. So we're going to say line cap, and we're going to say equals. And there's three different options. There's but, round, and square. By default, it's but, which is what we have right now. So if I type in but here, save it, we're not going to see any difference in the HTML up in the, the browser. Uh, we can do uh, round, which gives us nice rounded edges. And we can also do square, which is pretty similar to but. It just extends the line a little bit longer. So if we put this back to but, and if you watch, it will look the same, just shorter. So I'm not really, I haven't really read up on what the differences are, but basically I think of it as square and round, but's the default. So uh, maybe someone comment below, or maybe I could look it up myself. So that's it for this tutorial. Let's quickly review, and actually let's actually add a second line. So since we began drawing a line here, and then we drew it here, we can be begin drawing another line after that, still using the same context. So I'm just going to quickly copy, paste uh, our information here, and I'll just change its position. So I'll say 50 there, and I'll change this to 50, and we'll change this to blue so that you can see. Um, we'll save that, let it run, and there we go, we have another line. Let me make this a little bit longer, actually. Let's go 150 here, because I want the lines to overlap a little bit, and we'll make this 150 as well. So now our lines are overlapping. No, they're not. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Let's make this 250. Sorry, got my X and Y mixed, mixed up there. So you can see that the lines are drawn just as if you were drawing on a piece of paper. The secondary lines will be drawn on top. So the first line we drew, which is this brownish line, when we drew another line, the second line gets drawn on top since it was drawn after the first line. Um, so that is it for this tutorial on basic lines. Let's uh, once again make this full screen. We're going to go, we got our HTML tags. We created a canvas. We gave it an ID. We gave it a width and height. Then we started our JavaScript down here. Uh, and once again, that's just so that it will run after the canvas is created. Uh, if we wanted to, we could hap it happen after you click a button, in which case you could put it up in the header. Once again, different people have different preferences. Um, then we're creating a variable here. 
called canvas, which is actually just pointing to our canvas object because we're looking at our document, which is our page itself, our HTML. It's doc type. This is our document. So it's looking at that and it's finding an element with the ID of my canvas in this case up there, but it doesn't have to be my canvas. It could be whatever you want to call it, but it is case sensitive. So if I did a capital M and a capital C here as I did, we have to type a capital M and a capital C here as well. But now every time we call canvas, we're going to be looking at this object or this element. Um, and then we're going to look at that element and get its context, which is 2D here. And we're going to put that in the context. That just saves us from typing all that out every time. And now we can use our context to begin a path where we want to start drawing to. So we're going to move to a certain position, uh, X and Y there. Then we're going to draw a line or move it to uh, create a line to another position. We can set its width. Uh, we can set stroke style, we can set its line caps, and then when you say stroke is when it's drawn. Uh, do remember that this is all case sensitive, so you want a capital C there, a capital S there, a capital W there, a capital T is here and here. Um, but that's it. That's drawing a line in Canvas. Uh, I know it seems very simple, uh, drawing a line, you know, uh, but you can do a lot of cool stuff, as you will see in the coming weeks and months as we get more in depth in this we get into stuff with uh with physics and 3d stuff it will get pretty cool so and actually before we even get to that stuff we'll do some cool stuff so i thank you for watching please visit filmsbychris.com that's chris with a k there should be a link in the description uh and i hope that you have a great day